Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for, um, you know, taking the time out of your day to talk to me um, uh, and answer a few questions. Happy to do um, it. <laughs> um, first, I want to know what your opinion on the um, documentary Behind the Curve uh, you were featured on. Okay, my opinion. <laughs> um and it's pretty much what I predicted because you got to remember I've seen it. I saw it a long time before you did. Uh, I oh. I got to see it when it first was premiered in April of last year, so about almost a year ago, um, up in uh, up in Canada. And okay. <clears throat> what I what I was trying to tell people after I got back because I was the only one to see it. Uh, well, myself and Patricia Steer. Uh, when I got back to the community, I said the community is going to hate it. But the general, <laughs> the general population is going to be intrigued. They are going to ask a lot of questions. And that's exactly what we saw. Film festival after film festival that we went to, which, you know, the people in the audience were, had to have been at least 90% globalists. Uh, mm -hmm. They had questions, a lot of them. In fact, I stayed for Q&As where I would go up on stage and people would ask me questions and they just would never end. It was just this, ne you know, and as, as you can imagine, because the... What I noticed was the first 30 minutes, if you went into this, this documentary not knowing anything about it, the first 30 minutes, you were, uh, you were looking at it like it wasn't real. You mean like, meaning it, the, even the topic wasn't real, like it's all, okay, it's a, it's a mockumentary or it's a piece of docufiction or something like that. And then by the time you, do, you were done, you had a lot of questions. So did I think, sorry, long, long story short, do I think they, <laughs> do they think they painted us fairly? Um, it was a fair look at what we were doing in 2017 because most of the footage was shot in 2017. However, you got to remember that the director, by the time he got to the end of this thing, hated Flat Earth. He didn't hate the people. He doesn't hate me or Patricia or Bob or Jaron or anybody else, but he hates the topic because he thinks it's dangerous to, to science. And he said this as much during the uh, director's commentary on the iTunes version where he said when he saw that 12-year-old kid walk up to the microphone and start asking me questions, that's when they knew they had to take a stand against us. And that's why they took the shots that they did, which was, you know, fine, I, I get it. It was their movie, The Power of Editing. Uh, they were cheap shots, but it was their right. It was their movie. So there you go. Yeah. I actually just watched the documentary, um last week i believe mm -hmm. and i think it's definitely obvious that the documentary goes in already with this underlying bias um you oh, know yeah. against the flat earth theory absolutely oh yeah um and you mentioned in that documentary that um before uh flat earth you were interested in other conspiracy theories sure um which ones in particular were you involved in Oh, I looked at all of them. I mean, I'm older, so I, I have I have looked because remember, I'll give you an example of how old. I mean, I could say I'm 50, but it's not going to make any sense to you. Um, <laughs> well, you would be like, so what does that mean? It's like, okay, I saw the original JFK movie by Oliver Stone in the theater, opening weekend, and that wow. was in the early 90s, and it was one of the first, if not the first, true conspiracy movie that came out. So after, but before that, I didn't even think the conspiracies existed. I didn't think that any, I thought everything that you saw in the news, everything you read in the history books was absolutely at face value. Why would they lie to us? And then I realized the world was a lot more complicated. Uh, most of it has to do with money and power and resources and, and men that would do anything for that power. And so, <clears throat> when, sorry, um, when it comes to other conspiracies, I mean, you could just rattle off some. And I, I mean, my favorites are the big ones, the really big ones, the, the world changing ones like um, Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or uh, I mean, JFK to a lesser extent, because that was an assassination of uh, a very, very popular president. Uh, just about every American war that was ever fought. Um but other than that, I mean, I've got my opinions on the others, but I, you, you probably, again, to me, they don't, they don't mean as much anymore because Flat Earth is so huge that mm -hmm. everything else is, is second tier at, at least. Flat Earth knocks everything down at least one peg. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so going into um, Flat Earth, mm -hmm. um, do you... So with the concept of outer space in the context of flat Earth, 
Uh, Do you believe in outer space or like another equivalent of that? Um, As in like, what is, what is beyond the dome and where are we basically? Well, that's just it. I mean, when you're talking about outer space, you got to remember who told you there was outer space to begin with, because up, up until about 500 years ago, we just thought they were lights in the sky. We didn't know what they were. And every culture thought this. They, they believed what they saw, which was lights in the sky. And then NASA came along and said, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, here's, here's how the solar system looks. And here's, we've got physical evidence and, and all this other stuff. So when I come back and I say, no, they're just lights in the sky and you're in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, then what's beyond it? You got me. Uh, I'd like to think at the very least there was more of these out there. I don't think it's a one off. I think there are, you know, there are versions of this, these in different stages. I mean, could we be just another snow globe on a laboratory desk? Possibly. Uh, Do I think there's a, you know, this vast, huge universe with mostly made up of mostly empty space? No. No, I don't. Um, I I would like to think that outside of this universe here, I'll, I'll take it a different direction. If this world is 99% conflict, and I know you're not young enough to, to see it yet, but it is, it's, it's almost inescapable. It doesn't matter how rich, how powerful, how beautiful, how talented you are. You will always find stuff to complain about, which I think is very interesting for a world. I mean, bliss is almost impossible to find here. That I would like to think that outside of this world is an unlimited universe, which is 99% conflict free. And that's, you know, but I'm a glass half full type of guy. So that's, that's what I would like to think it is. I don't think it's sinister. Do I think it's the matrix on the other side of this where we're grown in fields and harvested? No, no, I don't. I think it's a good movie, but I, I don't think that's what this yeah. universe is about. Okay. Um, so how do uh, NASA and all the other organizations in collusion benefit from you know, lying to the world about the Earth being round, and what are some possible motivations behind that? The space agencies really don't benefit that much other than they're employed. Uh, you got to remember that, I, I've got to be clear here, 99% of NASA and the space agencies, the employees that work there, don't know anything about anything. They just turn wrenches, they build fuel systems and polish capsules and sew suits and stuff like that. They don't have to know anything. It's compartmentalization. Uh, now, at the same time, they are employed. We are employing millions of people in different countries. That, that much is true. Uh, so they gain something from it. I mean, come on. If you had an organization that was fake and, you, and the government was giving you $52 million a day, and that's just NASA, $52 million a day, you know what? You'd, you'd, you're benefiting in some way because you don't have to spend mm-hmm. all that money on what you're supposed to be spending it on. You can channel it to, to other programs. Um, other than that, they don't, they don't really benefit that much. The, the people that benefit are the people at the top, the, the people that pay for these things, the people that orchestrated it, uh, the people that are most responsible for keeping it a secret because information is power. We all know that. Uh, it's the, probably the most, uh, well, second most valuable currency in the universe is, is information because if you have it and other people don't, you can use it to exploit certain things. And in this case, keep the world... Uh, the status quo going, which is which I said in my clues. By the way, I didn't even I didn't even ask you. I know you saw the documentary, but uh, did you contact me before watching the clues, or, or have you even watched them? I have, I have, I haven't watched all of them. There's tw- is there twenty two? Uh, or... Not really twenty two, but but as long as you've okay. watched as long as you've watched the core of them, that that kind of helps. Yeah, I've watched I've watched two of them. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what exactly is it? stake um, in the struggle between flat earthers and any perpetrators of the round earth or um, in other words why does it matter to you um, and other flat earthers and if NASA were to come out or the government or um, the people in power were to come out and admit that the earth is flat and that they've been lying what changes about life and why is it important to you well and it's not like we're we're actively going out there and trying to uh, recruit well, I mean, there is some street activism on our part, and we, but we also know that for everybody that's out there that, that doesn't know about this, it, there's an absorption process. We plant the mm-hmm. seed, and then we kind of let people figure it out for themselves, which is why I say at the end of most of my videos, look, don't, don't take what I'm, what I'm selling as, you know, the gospel. Uh, do your own research and ask questions, because you know, I'm just a guy. Uh, but it matters because 
if because science has told us for the last 500 years that we're nothing that we're these it, we're, we're that the world is just this little tiny rock that's flying through space and could be snuffed out at any time it's it's just this tiny little speck and we're just a speck on a speck we're meaningless we have no purpose in the universe we're just this accident Whereas we come back and we say, no, 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 no. If flat earth is correct and it's an enclosed world, then it was built. And whether or not you believe in God, at the very least, you're going to believe in a higher technology or a higher civilization than ourselves, which meant that we were built for a reason. And we are inside here for a reason. And it becomes much more intimate and you have a purpose. Now, do we know what that purpose is exactly? Nope. No, we do not. But we know the purpose is there. And that has really, really opened up a lot of people in a spiritual sense. And I don't care, again, what religious house you, you, be, you belong to. One of the main five, um, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, or Christianity. All of them have a piece to the same puzzle. But once you get into it, once you get into flat earth, all of a sudden that's reinforced. And so it matters a great deal. You're basically, uh, it's, one, of the, one of the clues I did was called They Are Hiding God. And no, I'm not going to quote chapter and verse to you because, I mean, I, I think I wouldn't think that'd be fair to the other religions. But uh, some of it has to do with that, which is, look, you're significant. You're not just a um, an empty shell and people need to know that. And that's it's, it's important. I mean, it's it's it. Look, it's the question we all ask when we're growing up uh, or throughout our lives, which is why am I here? And most of the people out there in the world don't get any sort of solid answer they can sink their teeth into we give them that okay and um you know you spoke a bit about religion and it doesn't matter which religion you follow do you think flat earth has the same appeal because of that to people who may not follow religion such as atheists or people who are agnostic agnostics have an easier time because then you can uh when you get to that final stage it's like okay if it was built, again, the default shape of this of, of the flat world just screams that it was built. It can't be organic. Then you can only go one of two ways. Either, either it's an advanced civilization or it's the divine. And really at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs because one man's uh, advanced technology is another man's deity. And so, um, sorry, what was the original question on that? Um, I guess, do you think flat earth has the same appeal or can have the same appeal or greater meaning to people who may not follow religion due to the lack of yeah yeah sorry um, sorry, in a higher sorry power. i'm i'm just still fighting a, a little bit left of a head cold so you have to bear with me yeah no, no worries. Worries. uh so yeah agnostic yes agnostic it will bring people in atheist it's tough um will flat earth kill atheism it will reduce their numbers to a very very small amount because you can't be a true atheist and still be in flat earth. You can't. Uh, it's it just by the default shape. You can't, you can't be an atheist and m admit the shape of the, the earth being enclosed. That we're in a building and then say that somebody else didn't build it. Unless you want to say that, well, okay, it's someone like us. And then, then it's like, okay, we're on equal terms with whoever built this place. Which, I don't know, it's kind of a stretch. So yeah, agnostic, yes. Atheist, tough sell. So what would be, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this, what would be the next step, I guess? Like, what is the end goal of um, Flat Earth to, what is the next step if NASA, sorry, I keep saying NASA, if the people in power were to come out and say, we've been lying to you this whole time, we are in, um, you know, an enclosed globe, uh, or not globe, oh my gosh. That's <laughs> all right, globe. that's all right. Again, that show, <laughs> it shows you why why it is so tough to, to to get this out there to people, but go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So, what would what would happen if we were in this enclosed flat Earth and people came out and admitted it? What would be the next step? Like, what is is there some sort of end goal, or is it just wanting to impart general knowledge and um, awareness of this? I mean, is there a the next people? step for us? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're trying to force it. I sort of consider it like this giant chess game where we are on one side and the powers that be are on the other side and up until now the powers that be didn't really have anyone to play against and so flat earth has become this weird organic uh juggernaut that just doesn't seem to want to go away i mean we've been doing this now for four years and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger so 
the goal for us would be to, yes, to have some sort of admission on the other side where somebody caves in. And the, the question is, if they did admit it, they, they wouldn't admit it unless they had a follow up to it. They're not just going to come out and say, all right, well, you caught me because you're talking about something that's bigger than even the financial crisis of 10 years ago. And I know you're young and so you didn't probably remember what happened. But I mean, or what maybe you just read what you read. Uh, but there was mm -hmm. a giant corporation called AIG, which is which is considered too big to fail. A corporation so so big that a, you could not allow a class action lawsuit against it. Um, and NASA would be the sort of the same thing, or all the other space agencies. I mean, NASA is a monstrous arm of the United States government, despite what people think. No, is it the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines? No, it's not. But it's big. It's very, very big. In fact, it would be too big to fail in a term in terms of morale, meaning you can't allow a class action lawsuit against NASA. It would be very, very tough because you would also have you these have these corporations that are tied to it. These massive industrial complex corporations like General Dynamics or Boeing or Lockheed Martin. I mean, these are big, big corporations, military hardware uh, corporations. So. If they were to come out and release it, they would have to have a follow-up. Meaning, and we've been kind of waiting for it anyway, saying and saying, okay, it's flat, and we were told to do so, and you would probably, if if I was going to do it, I wouldn't do it without releasing uh, some another species, uh, another version of us that's out there, a hidden civilization that we, maybe we that that we never even thought about until now. That's why, and it sounds surreal. It sounds like a science fiction movie, but come on, flat Earth on its own reads like a science fiction movie in fact it's been touched on in, in many different science fiction books and television shows over the years uh so that's what we'd want but at the same time you know we yes we'd want disclosure that's the short version but where that disclosure leads pff, i don't know that's one of the reasons i think about this every day which is okay if i was playing chess what would i do i wouldn't just again you're not just going to confess there's something else you you would you would tie to it Sorry, I ramble. No, that's totally fine. If, you know, if we, is there any sense of, or any notion of trying to, I guess, break out of flat earth if we are, um, you know, in, in this enclosed structure? Is, is that, an, is that a goal of any kind? So if we're in a building, would people try to break out? Yeah, absolutely. That's okay. First off, that's one of the reasons that you keep it a secret. I, I talked about that in the clues, which was. Uh, human beings are the only species on this world that react w badly to confinement of any kind. Uh, the The argument I put in there was the, the wildlife preserve. Whereas you could put some buffalo in a wildlife preserve, thousand acres with a big fence around it. And, you know, if they have water and food and grass and this wonderful place to play, they, they'd be per perfectly happy. They'd never complain. You put a human being, even 10 human beings in that same enclosure... They're just going to hang out next to the wall all day long. That's all they're going to do. They're going to obsess over that wall. Um, and they're going to, and if they had the technology, they're going to try to break out, which is what I think the United States and the Soviet Union did from 1958 until about 1961 or the end of 1961 with their high altitude atomic we weapon program, which is that's that most people don't know that for four years, the, the United States and the Soviets, the, the only people with atomic weapons, that's all they did was fire straight up for four years. And the, the first shots were megatons, and which was very expensive back in the 1950s. Not as expensive now, but in the 1950s, super, super expensive. And then they just used kiloton weapons. And honestly, if you can't get out with megaton weapons, you're going to have to change tactics. And I don't think they've ever stopped trying. Uh, after, after, you know, because atomic weapons, that's just brute force. You know, that's the obvious thing. It's like, you know, just fire a cannon at it and you just keep working your way up with explosives, right? Well, if that's not working, what else are you going to try? Um, the HARP, look into the HARP program, H-A-A-R-P, the, the high, you know, the, the frequency modulation program that we've had going on for a long time, which is only semi-secret. And then last but not least, uh, CERN, which is, you know, if you can't break out through brute force, maybe you can open up a doorway and get out that, that, that method. And I think CERN has been their best bet as of late. And uh, but again, it's a super secret project, and we don't we don't know. But yes, they're, you're not you're never going to try, stop trying. I mean, think of it. Men in jail will always think about breaking out, and that's just jail. 
if it was their own world, absolutely they'd try. Again, look at and again, you're you're not um, old enough to probably remember the Truman Show movie, which was what was the first thing mm -hmm. he did. I mean, he, once he knew there was even a chance of getting out, he tried to get out, and he did. He made it out. Uh, but he did not stop. Nothing would stop him. You know, the, the destruction of his marriage, the destruction of his career, the destruction of his entire world, just to see what was out there. Human beings are love a mystery, and we um, were curious by nature, by design. And do you think that that human tendency to reject um, enclosure is makes us superior like a, sorry a superior species to animals or do you think that's a human flaw Oof, that's a great question no one's ever asked me that no seriously <laughs> that is an i don't know where you got that question but i've been interviewed a lot <laughs> and no one's ever asked me that um boy that's a good one um is it is it a weakness or is it a flaw or i'm sorry is it a, is it a um a positive or a negative in human beings that we would reject enclosure, re reject being fenced in. I would like to, I suppose it depends who, you, who, what type of person you are. I would like to see it as a positive because we all, because it is our tendency to explore. You gotta remember before there was a new world and like over in the Middle East, they still call America the new world in a lot of circles, which is interesting. Before we knew what all the continents were, we just kept exploring, just kept going. I mean, risking death, and, uh, and and finances and, and would just go out there and do that. So uh, just to see if we could find the end of the world, we could find the limits of our world. And then once we found the limits, would we, would we try to get out? Of course we would. Is that a flaw though? No, no, I don't. I don't think so because it is, it's just, it, without it, we wouldn't explore as well. We wouldn't have that drive to, to, to seek out, you know, to, to seek out things as much as we are. I mean, human beings have a lot of flaws, and of course, we're different from any other species on this world. But I don't. I don't think it's a flaw. Uh, I think we, we are. We again, we love a mystery. We love finding the solutions to things, and it the an enclosed world is a puzzle in some aspects, which is we want to know uh, again what our place is in the universe, and that is you know once. Once you get to one barrier, you want to look out past it and see what's what's beyond, uh, which, of course, is why we were always, you know, we, we let me take it a different way. Why we wrote so many science fiction novels in regards to space. Once science and some of the people in authority told us that space was this vast, endless universe, we started creating stories around that. You know, we're, we used to create the Zodiac, you know, the constellations back in the day, and we personified all that. And then once we said, oh, yeah, there's planets, and what if you could live on them? Our imaginations just went to the utmost limits, and we created all this fan, this fantastic science fiction universe outside of us. Um, but, yeah, once we were enclosed, that would be the first thing we do is is try to try to find it again. So, no, I'm sorry. Short answer, I don't think – I think it's a plus. I think it is part of our mm – -hmm. it's, it's one of those things, you know, for us to boldly go – into the unknown and and seek out i mean i gotta give credit to the men who just got on ships and just sailed in one direction mm -hmm. and you know it's like all right we may not be coming back but you know we're, we're <laughs> but we're driven to do this and uh yeah i i i think it's a positive okay um and this is sort of a tangential question just because you mentioned uh, getting on boats and, and just going. And you may have mentioned this in the clues, and I apologize, I didn't watch all of them. But um, has, has there ever been any thought of just trying to find the edge, like trying to find the wall? Oh, of course. Of course. Uh, we, we've been trying, we've been thinking about that since, since minute one. Uh, in fact, when I, was, when I was turning the Flat Earth into a thought experiment, the first thing I thought of was like, okay, what is you know, the, the, the outer edge, the outer marker? And that's when I ran into, metaphorically speaking, uh, the um, the Antarctic Treaty, which was yeah. the the Antarctic Treaty was laid out in so many different layers, and it's every one of them is more difficult than the last. That you realize what they're willing to do to keep you from the average person from just accidentally finding it and running back and telling people. Uh, 
of course, we'd, we'd love to do some sort of expedition out there. Love to. Uh, but the means to do it are very, very, they are, are difficult. So, again, the mm-hmm. Antarctic Treaty, which was put into place in 1959, and it's un- the un- only unbroken treaty in the history of anything. It's not up for debate until 2041. Um, no country owns Antarctica. No country can set up businesses there. Only governments, the military and military scientists can go there uh, with the military's permission. Uh, but even if you wanted to, let's say, for example, because this has been suggested many times, let's say you got a pilot that would be willing to fly and breathe, you know, just go against the treaty, just go for broke, right? With a fully fueled 757 or something with a big fuel tank on it. Cause you have to, you need a lot of gas to pull this thing off. Uh, he'd also be able to, he'd have to be willing to fly without most instrumentation meaning you have to ignore GPS because GPS works for the governments. You know, it's a, it's a government, it's a military mm-hmm. system. You'd have to ignore most of the compasses because the compasses aren't going to tell you what you want to see. You'd have to basically line a sight it with almost no landmarks to do that. And even when you got there, would it be a one-way trip? How long would you be willing to fly in one direction without instrumentations with, you know, every hour getting more and more precarious? Without turning back, I it'd be very very tough to do. Yes, we'd love to do it. Sure, you bet. Love to do it. Uh, but it's but that's tough. So we're kind of resigned to proving it on the inner on the inner side uh, with the um uh, uh, the resources we have here. You know, proving proving long distance photography, proving laser experiments, proving uh, eclipse experiments, and uh, questions questioning NASA, questioning the Van Allen radiation belts questioning the power of a vacuum versus gravity and so on and so on usually that'll that and that's done well for us so far but yeah i'd love we'd love to do an expedition if we could all right cool um and this is the last question and that is if there was one thing that you would want everyone to know um you know about flat earth about flat earthers and the flat earth society what would it be and why okay First off, you got to remember that we don't have anything to do officially with the old school Flat Earth Society. If Flat Earth Society uh, is version 1.0, Flat Earth 1.0, we're version 2.0. Uh, meaning social media, once social media got involved with high speed internet and, and uh, all the smartphones, we sort of took over that that side of things. So everything regarding YouTube and websites and stuff that the Flat Earth Society just didn't seem to care about for whatever reason. So that that's first thing. We have nothing to do with with the official Flat Earth societies that are out there. Every, everything we do just lives on social media. And 90% of that is on YouTube. Um, one thing, if I had to tell them one thing... Um, I would tell, yeah, I, I, I've got it. And that is, don't believe in flat earth. Don't, don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Uh, I don't care what channel it is, how big they are, how, how many subscribers they have, uh, what sort of podcasts they do, or what experiments they've done. Don't take their word for it. Because as you know, there's a lot of deception out there in the world. There's deception everywhere. Do your own research. Ask your own questions. Figure it out for yourself. Don't uh, ever take anything at face value. There's a wonderful old saying, which is uh, trust everyone, but count your change. And that is, yeah, fine. You you like my channel. You like what I do. You like the the clues. You like the documentary. Fantastic. Great. That should not convince you alone what the world is and where you live. Definitely go out there and what it's going to take for you to believe, you know, go out there and start poking around. Ask a few questions. See if you can prove it for yourself. Treat it like, this will be the last part, treat it like a court, court case, which is what I did, what everybody did. Nobody goes into flat earth loving it the first time. Everybody hates it, which should be a testament of the power of this topic. Try to prove the globe in a court of law. Try to do it and see if you can do it. And also, if you want to make it challenging for yourself, don't don't take the easy route and say, well, I've, I've seen all these wonderful images from NASA. No, no, no. See if you can do it without NASA because NASA didn't invent the globe. It's not like we woke up in 1972 and said, oh, well, it's a globe because NASA told us so. We, we've known for the last 500 years. So how did you know that we it was a globe for 500 years? Uh, in fact, 
let me I'll end with this quote uh, which is from George Orwell uh, he was uh, you get the guy that wrote 1984 and yeah. he was yeah, he was not crime. a flat earther but he he was talking about how people believe science no matter what I mean if, if you wear a white lab coat and you put your rubber stamp of science on it people just believe it because well he's smarter than me therefore I should believe him which is why you should ask your own questions uh, and he said if you went up to the average person on the street and ask them how they knew the world was a globe they would all respond the same way which is we just know duh it's a globe and then if you try to press them on it and this happens even today if you try to press them on it and say well yeah but how do you know they get angry it was interesting because he wrote this in 1946 NASA wasn't even founded until 1958 so how did everybody in the world know in 1946 that it was a globe it wasn't that they knew it was they were told you were told for a long, long time. And if you're told something for a long time, you're going to believe it. So don't believe everything you're told. Do your own research. Ask questions. There you go. That's my ending. Awesome. That's cool. awesome. All right. That's all I have. Um, thank you so much again. <laughs> that was really, really eye-opening. Oh, yeah. Um, really interesting. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> I could help. And if there's anything else, just feel free to reach out. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye -bye. You too.